2nd, 2010 to get a victory. How much does it mean to you? We'll never compete financially with those two Goliaths. But we will compete with the sword of truth. We will compete with shoe leather. We will compete with shoe leather and elbow grease and we can win this race if you want to win this race. And fortunately for Texas, many of you have decided you've had enough too. And you've stood shoulder to shoulder and arm in arm. And so we are over the target. We are statistically even with Kay Hutchison and our trajectory is doing that. And theirs is doing this. This is a campaign, remember, that nobody was going to know anything about. And then she's just going to get a couple of points. And then, why didn't she just sit down? Because now she's going to cost us millions of dollars and we're going to have to have a runoff. And doesn't she know that? Get out of the way. And then she might be in the runoff. I'm here to tell you we're going to win this race. We're going to win this race because we've had enough tyranny. We've had enough secrets. We've had enough corruption. We've had enough special interest in our lives. We want a government of the people, by the people, for the people, and we deserve a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Claver was talking about education a little bit earlier, and I had a conversation in West Texas some weeks ago that I think may demonstrate to you something that I think is very critical, not just for your gubernatorial candidate, but for all candidates and for everybody that's in serving us in elected office. I think we as conservatives often pat ourselves on the back and certainly our politicians sing, sing, sing about individual liberty and freedom and responsibility. I had a woman in West Texas say to me, as we were talking about education, why did you choose to homeschool your kids? I mean, can you really support public education, when you chose homeschooling, why did you choose homeschooling? And I said, it's none of your business. It's your choice as a parent. We need government that's courageous enough to say that my job in the government is to create a set of laws that ensure fairness and justice, that ensure those laws apply equally to everybody but I have no business using the club of the government to try to force you into the same line that I'm walking in my family. We don't have that in government today. Everybody talks about freedom to choose as long as you choose for your family what I chose for mine. That's not freedom. That doesn't give us the kind of innovation and prosperity and creativity and joy and peace that we get when you get to decide what you're going to do in your home. You want to vaccinate your daughter, you vaccinate her. You have a conversation with your physician and you and your family make that choice. You want to send your child to the public school, go to the public school. You want to use a private school, go to the private school. That's your choice. You want to drive a Ford, drive a Ford. You want to drive a Dodge, drive a Dodge. That's not your government's job. And yet we've got this paternalism in Austin that thinks that we cannot make decisions for ourselves. Got to be in between parents and children. We've got to be in between doctors and patients. We've got to be in between business owners and their employees. We've got to be in between businesses and their customers. It's not freedom. This is a constitutional republic the U.S. Constitution is the best blueprint ever drawn for a free and prosperous society. Yeah. Courageous enough to say we're going to get back to that Constitution. We're going to acknowledge if we believe that, then we have to behave that way. I interviewed with Shelly Koffler at KERA. Some of you may recognize Shelly. She was the lady that moderated the first debate. I interviewed with her back in September. And she said, 
Well, you mean you wouldn't have a Federal Clean Air Act? And I said, not in Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. Well, what about health care? I said, not in Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. Either you believe it's the best blueprint ever drawn and you build the nation accordingly, or you tear it up and you start over. I'm for believing it's the best blueprint ever drawn and getting back to it. Those powers not delegated to the federal government are reserved to the states and the people. Tenth Amendment. When we got into this race, I really shifted my focus to the state of Texas. What can leadership and government in Texas do? Remember that I was initially approached in November 2008. That was just after President Barack Obama had been elected, but right before he took office. But it was about the time we had had our first government bailout. The Federal Reserve System is doubling the supply of money in this country. It's driving down the value of the dollar. Look over history. Other nations that have increased their monetary supply have had their money completely devalued. They've had a period of hyperinflation in their nation. Here sits Texas, a very diverse economy, a very diverse people, 13th largest economy in the world. Is there something we can do besides sit here helpless if and when that dollar devalues and that hyperinflation comes? What can Texas do? And I began to really study how do we build a hedge of protection around this state in the event that implosion occurs. What do we do? And I really started studying that Tenth Amendment and that idea of sovereignty. And I was out early talking about Jefferson saying, it is the unquestionable right of the states to determine when the federal government steps outside that compact called the U.S. Constitution. In the last week, I have begun to say Mr. Jefferson might should have said it's the unquestionable duty of the state. It's our job to tell them. It's your job as parents to tell your children when they step outside the rules of your home and to pull them back in. It's our job to tell the federal government you don't have the authority to do that. You're not going to drive that car after 10 o'clock on Friday night. You cannot do that. I've only given you Article 1, Section 8 authority. You have no authority there. I talked to a state representative in Oklahoma some months ago. He said, Deborah, we've got to quit calling that stuff federal law when there's no constitutional authority to do it. It's illegal federal action. And when Washington, D.C. When Washington, D.C. takes an illegal federal action, the legislature of the state of Texas needs to pass a law here that identifies that as an illegal federal action and says it will have no effect in our state. <laughs> Mr. Jefferson and Mr. Madison said the rightful remedy when the federal government does that is nullification, interposition. And I began early talking about where do we begin? Is there a pillar that we can begin to chop away at to begin to push Washington, D.C. back to those confines. We didn't get here overnight. We're not going to get back overnight, but we've got to begin to whittle and get Washington out of this body called Texas. It invades every organ here. Do we start in education? See, the, US, the Texas Constitution says in order that our children would understand liberty, the state of Texas will provide a free public education for the general dissemination of knowledge. We don't need Washington telling us how to teach our kids. Do we start in education? Or you may have noticed we have an energy.